has now been taken out of the dog from the underworld all around now! Hey guys, I'm Anson9132, and I'm the Robot Wars Guru. Poor old Killer Hertz. Nothing ever seemed to go right for the Terror Hertz predecessor, which is a shame because the producers certainly had high hopes for it. I mean, seeded 16th? Really? Then again, it is easy to see why. It looked fantastic, had some interesting tech, was entertaining in the arena, and even had a lot of success in battle bots. Surely competing in its home country was a match made in heaven for the machine, but sadly, it was never to be for several reasons. These reasons include bad reliability, an unlucky draw, or some incredibly shoddy driving. And it's this shoddy driving that is our main focus of today's video. It's a well-known thing that the happenings in life can be altered by the smallest thing. And this is one of those small things. How well would Kilohertz have done? And how would it affect the show from that point? Well, let's take a look and see what would have happened if Kilohertz didn't pit itself in Series 3. So first off, I think it's pretty obvious that it would beat Cerberus. It sucks because I love Cerberus, but I can't really see how it would win without Kilohertz screwing up. We see in the fight that Kilohertz's axe had no issue going through Cerberus' armour, doing some severe damage to the battery box. After a few more hits like this, Kilohertz would either score the KO or win via the judge's decision. Next up, Griffin! <laughs> yeah, right. A low flat robot that barely moved? Kilohertz would have to go out of its way to lose this one. Oh, wait. Seriously though, this is Kilohertz's fight. However, I don't see it winning the fight in 10 seconds like Cerberus did. This means Firestorm vs Crash and Nasher in the next heat would have become the shortest battle at the time at 12 seconds, before being trumped by Dan Tom Kier vs IG88 in Series 7. And in the heat final, I can't see Thing 2 losing. If there was one thing that Kilohertz always struggled with, it was fast, nippy, agile robots that could easily get out of the way of the axe. Add to that Thing 2's aggressive driving, wedge shape and Kilohertz's unreliable self-writing and we have a clear-cut winner in Thing 2. So now it's time to see how it would affect Series 4. I'll admit I was slightly dreading this as it meant I may have to alter a lot of the seedings. However, as it turns out, all I had to do was swap it and Wheelie Big Cheese around. I honestly doubt they would have been mad enough to seed it higher than any returning semi-finalist, but I feel they would seed it higher than Wheelie Big Cheese, considering they only seeded it one space lower than it in real life, despite it not winning a bloody fight in its Robot Wars career at that point. This means Kilohertz is now in Heat H, whilst Wheelie Big Cheese is in Heat I. In its opening melee, I still feel Prizefighter would lose, simply because it died under literally no pressure in the battle that happened. Kilohertz and Suicidal Tendencies would then steamroll Killatron and Wheelosaurus before meeting in the Heat Final. This is a tough heat final, but I think the case for Kilohertz to win holds more merit. Its axe was more reliable as a stream act than the series, and Suicidal Tendencies was a flat, low robot with exposed tracks, making it a lovely target for that big axe. Also, Suicidal Tendencies had track reliability issues, so Kilohertz makes the semis. This is where the run ends, however. I'm sorry, but if Splinter could beat it, surely Tornado could. I can just see it being slammed around before its reliability issues inevitably kick in. Being honest, it was on borrowed time at this point anyway. As for Wheelie Big Cheese? Well, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I don't think it would get past round two. If Wheelie Big Cheese had one fault, at least in Series 4, it was the aim of its flipper. Unless something drove onto it for them, like Killatron did, it struggled to get underneath anything. Plus, Splinter was an excellent control bot that would have had no issue grappling those big, chunky wheels and shoving it around the arena. This means that everything after Killerheads vs Tornado would remain the same as it did in real life. So with Kilohertz being a series semi-finalist, I think Terahertz would be invited to be in the All-Stars Tournament of Extreme 1. Who would it replace? Well, considering by my logic it would have lost in Round 2 of Series 4, I say it replaces Wheelie Big Cheese. Now I think we can all agree that Terahertz would beat Deator in Round 1. However, I would argue that it would lose to Chaos 2. Chaos 2 had fought and beaten Big Axes in the past, and let's be honest now, Terahertz wasn't quite there yet. It struggled against Ming 3 for fuck's sake. So yeah, Chaos 2 wins, meaning Razor wins the whole thing in the end. As for Series 5? Well, once again I was kind of worried that I would have to redo a lot of the seeds, but thankfully this also proved to be easy as apple pie. Why? Well, because it lost so early in Series 4, Wheelie Big Cheese wouldn't be seeded, as far as my logic is concerned anyway. And is it really that hard to believe that the producers would seed Terahertz 10th in this reality? 
It has the same series record as Wheelie Big Cheese at this point after all. So once again their respective heats get swapped, with Terahertz now being in heat H and Wheelie Big Cheese now being in heat L. This does sadly mean we don't get the huge flip on Axor, but deal with it. And with all that in mind, that leaves us with Terahertz vs Wolverine. Foregone conclusion, right? Well, no actually. You might think I'm crazy, but I honestly think Terahertz would lose here. Like I said, in Series 5 it hadn't quite evolved into the killing machine that it was in Series 6. Again, it struggled against Ming 3. Wolverine meanwhile actually had Wheelie Big Cheese on the ropes for much of its battle and was a well-driven, hard-hitting and agile robot. I can't see it winning by a KO, but I think a judge's decision win is very plausible here. I can see Wolverine just ramming and shoving terahertz around the arena until Cease is called. Not only that, but I can see it beating Axor and Crustacean too. I doubt Axor or Crustacean's weaponry would have any effect on it, and again, I can see Wolverine bossing them about the arena before winning via the judges or a pitting. What about Wheelie Big Cheese? Well, I have no doubt it would beat Ming 3, but Fluffy would bugger it to buggery. Bit like Hitmanis did really. Then Fluffy would lose to Pussycat, etc, etc, etc. How would Wolverine do in the semi-finals? Well, sadly the run would end here. Dominator 2 may be given a bit of trouble to start, but eventually it would do what it did best, getting an axe shot after axe shot until Wolverine is a quivering goo. And I really can't see it upsetting Firestorm in the loser's melee. And with Terahertz losing so early in Series 5, it wouldn't be seeded for Series 6, meaning it would likely end up in the exact same heat it wound up in in real life, and we all know how that went, don't we? Would Wolverine return? Well, they didn't try to enter Series 6, but with a semi-final in their belt, it's very likely they might have. But sadly, there's just too much speculation involved, so I honestly can't say for sure, so I won't. And that's it for this theory and this video. Do you agree with me, or do you think I'm being a complete and utter mong? What do you think would have happened? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'm Anson9132 the Rewards Guru, and I'll see you next time.